Good day, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on our BPM tools white paper. My name is Katarina. I am an assistant at Business Growth Experts, BPE, and your moderator today. Um, so today we're going to have a presentation on BPE's tool study 2015. With me, I have the speaker, Dr. Jochen König. He is senior partner at BPE, head of BPE University, and one of the authors of the study. Um, we will start going through the presentation in a few moments. Please feel free to state questions using the chat function below, and we will try to answer as many of them as possible at the end of this webinar. Um, in the next phase, you will get also your copy of the study. So I'm going to actually hand over control to Jochen. When we founded BP Experts, we did that uh, with a clear ambition to be independent of any particular tool. So we have a long-standing history in uh, business process management and uh, had extensive experience with ARIS, for, uh, of course, but also a number of other tools. And so we've explored a number of uh, alternative software packages in the market uh, that we learn to know from our customer interactions. And today I want to give you uh, some of the results of our research that we did. Uh, our focus as business process experts is the chemicals, pharmaceutical and consumer goods industries. Are also referred to as the process industry for various reasons. And there we do uh, all sorts of business and IT transformation projects, anything that really relies on transparency and clarity of, of processes and real business process management. We are really not so much on the on the level of process automation, at least when it comes to, to coding or actual uh, customization of automation uh, solutions. However, as soon as we, or as you probably, start talking process and how to turn that into something that is measurable, automatable, or manageable in general, um, we should be your discussion partner. A complementary offering of ours beyond uh, the transformation side of things and, and general process and IT governance is actually risk and compliance. Uh, that is one of the areas that I in particular am interested in. So internal control systems and uh, process oriented risk management. But more on that you can find easily on our website. Today's topic, and that's what you are uh, booked up for, is, uh, as I already said, our white paper that we created as part of our research on uh, the tools landscape. We did not, and, and clearly not, have the ambition to really cover the entire market. We focused on solutions we came across as customers or found particularly interesting ourselves. So, and also one, one part of, of our approach here was to, well, really take up our experience with the tools rather than try and be, well, extra scientific or academic about that. So it's really a practical approach that we chose and uh, reflecting the, the problems we face in, in actual projects that we are doing with our customers. So why, why bother about this whole story at all? That is the first question, of course, that you've got to, to ask yourself. And we found four major segments where the choice of the right or wrong supporting tool set uh, really makes a difference in business process management. First of all, it's of course how, how successful 
uh, you can complete and advance in your project. This is also why we, as you will see later on, focus on a number of different use cases or use scenarios, typical projects that we get involved in. And the different projects really have different needs and requirements when it comes to what is the right tool. Of course, when you're thinking as a company about a sustained business process management uh, approach, um, not just for an individual project, but something to last for many years, and you have the ambition to actually uh, maintain and sustain your processes within that tool, um, you shouldn't think project-wise, but beyond that. Maybe I can spend some time later on to, to explore that a bit further. Then when it comes to choosing tools, we also talk about cost. And what we've seen in the market is that our cost differences are really considerable. However, what we've also learned is that uh, the costs that are quoted in price lists they don't really mean much. I mean, to me, it, it almost felt like uh, the, the experience I made when I started shopping for, for a kitchen for our new home. There is a price tag and there is the, the price that you actually pay in the end. And there doesn't seem to be much relationship between those two. So rather than stressing much about individual cost or so, I will spend more time on the usefulness of the, the tools for our use cases and leave it to you to uh, go into discussions with your respective sales rep and try to explore what's in it for you. However, as a, as a good practice, I, I would definitely suggest that when you plan your project, you should cons consider uh, the cost of the tool. So. If you're considering a one-time exercise, a one-time uh, like ERP development, for example, you definitely look at the different scale of engagement um, than you would when you're planning to go into sustained business process management. Standardization is the other topic, uh, in particular when we are looking at multi-site organizations or international organizations where you want to have different people interact uh, effectively and efficiently with each other. A common language is definitely one of the strong motivations for going into business process management and any standardized notation to actually model your, your processes. Otherwise, you, you could be just as well up with the standard operation procedures in, in written form to discuss process. However, when you want to talk about automation, optimization, and decision communication, the classic SOP format is, is probably not the best that one could conceive, hence the graphical styles. And then the, the comfort of, of interacting with tools. When you consider how different user levels you'll have in your organization, there'll be the power users for, for whom interacting with the BPM tool is every day's business, but you'll also have the management types. You only look at uh, your models for, for management review. You'll have auditors who only come by every couple of years and they still must be able to understand what you've modeled as long at least as you want to, to use your models as a communication tool into that channel also. But it also helps to, to interact among colleagues really when it comes to finding the best possible solution and the best possible process for your ERP for example or other operational processes. Okay, as I said, what I cannot offer you today is a complete market survey as uh, other groups have attempted to, to provide you with. We look on a, well, I hope not too small set of, of solutions, hand-picked solutions, 
that nevertheless cover a very broad space of uh, tool complexity. In, in general, we are talking about a very, very mature market. Business process management and business process modeling are by no means uh, novelties in the market. So we are talking about a high density of, of capability between tools. And in the end, it depends very much on, on your specific needs that you want to cover. All the versions and, and links to the tools will also be part of uh, the white paper that we'll distribute later on. So now to the B. How did we evaluate uh, the different tools? Our idea was that the most important dimensions of differentiation between tools are really the three that are depicted on this slide. First of all, there is the ease of use, uh, representing how interactive a tool is, how easy it is to use for, for different levels of users, and in that means how accessible the software is. So it's not just plain accessibility in terms of a complete novice accesses the system and how easy do they find it, but we also cover other aspects like what are the standards uh, that are supported, or also things like portability. We'll come to that in a minute. Smartness is the other major dimension, and that's actually addressing the, the question of how much you can achieve while interacting with the tool or by using the tool. This is also uh, the, the dimension that is most variable depending on the use case that you are having in mind. The ease of use is, is relatively stable in that sense, whereas the, the smartness factor, as we call it here, uh, is very much dependent on what is it that you want to achieve and does the tool actually provide the different features that you need for that. As a third dimension that also tends to be rather stable is the readiness to use aspect. And that is all the efforts that go into setting up the system initially, adding new users to it. So this is usually a process that happens uh, only once or just, well, the general user maintenance, of course, takes place. And here, there do is quite a spread between the different tools, depending on their IT architecture and also license models. But generally, thus, this doesn't differentiate between the different use cases. And there is maybe just one exception to this, and uh, that would be if you're looking at one-time exercise, of course, you, you want to have something that is set up very quickly, very easily, you don't need to care so much about maintenance, whereas when you really want to get into business process management hardcore and, and do it sustainably, then the initial cost is, well, doesn't play such a big role. You, you want to set it up once, you want a stable, scalable system. So aspects change a bit, that's, but that's more on the time scale of, of your use not the individual use case so much. Okay, the use cases. I've talked an awful lot about that. So these are the three ones that, that we looked at. And we want to do that from a user perspective, really. We are not so much going into uh, tool maintenance or tool administration, but we want to look at the tools from the end user perspective or project leader perspective. And do that with the different features uh, the, the BPM tools provide weighted against the importance in, in that specific use, um, yeah, in that use case. <laughs> so first of all is what I call standard business process analysis. Here, naturally, modeling is, is 
the key. The generation of process models and their analyses for um, the typical questions could be documentation breaks, it could be system breaks, um, but you may also want to, to go into KPI analysis, so integration can be an issue here. Then out of all the different ERP implementation scenarios, we specifically chose SAP integration because we felt uh, there is a, a strong differentiation within the market with regard to this aspect and also because in, in our customer base, at least, SAP is, is a clear market leader for the ERP solutions and many of the big projects going on either on the, on the template creation and rollout side or uh, also on the system maintenance side really revolve all about SAP and um, that's why we are not covering any of the other offerings here. Governance risk and compliance in, in combination or as, an, uh, as comparable approach to, to quality management is the third use case we want to look at briefly. And also the, the former two use cases rely on, on process models. We now get uh, a set of additional objects into our models. We want to display and categorize and quantify maybe even uh, risks and associated controls, but we also want to be able, or the, the focus is much stronger here also on uh, being able to version your models, uh, to have release control over them. So many of, of the process governance uh, questions come into play here also. There is hardly a means how to, to separate those three use cases completely from each other. But that's fundamentally why we chose to, to apply weighting to the individual features and, and uh, apply a ranking based on, on that system. Okay. Um, now that the use cases have been introduced, I want to spend a few minutes on uh, talking about the, the actual capabilities of the software we looked at in no particular but alphabetical order here. So for the ease of use, of course, it's to a large degree the ease of interaction directly. That would be expressed in the cleanliness of the user interface. How accessible is it really? Do I find my way around or do I have uh, like three or even more levels of submenus I have to dive through as You've seen it in the past in, in some solutions. But it's also the modeling support. So once you start actually creating your models, um, do you have things like mini toolbars that uh, suggest what the, the next object might be you want to use? Or do you, do you get uh, tooltips provided with uh, the different menu options? that will eventually make you much quicker understanding uh, the user interface and maybe also pick up the, the odd shortcuts, keyboard shortcut and the like on the way. Portability is an, definitely an increasing topic uh, lately. Not so much for, for modeling we find, although even there in workshops, workshop situations it can be very interesting to simply work from, from a tablet or other mobile device. But from our perspective, the, the major interest in portability comes when, when we are talking about process review, uh, about trainings and, and interactions with, with users directly. And then the standards. You, you may be surprised to, to find it in the uh, ease of use category here, but to us, Finding the common language and uh, sticking to that is very much a question of yeah, direct interaction among each other and how well a certain standard is supported also means how well is it enforced. So 
yeah, you, you may argue that it could also be placed in other categories, but I think it's, it's uh, well honed here. Now, the readiness to use, as I said, is the, the factor that is mostly a one-time effort. Here we have uh, the IT deployment and training requirements. I will not spend too much time on that for the use cases and also in the rankings we did, but we do provide some information on that aspect in the white paper, so uh, feel free to take a closer look at that. Now, smartness. That, that is the real differentiator from our perspective, especially when it comes to the application scenarios later on. Again, we have alphabetical order here. So even though collaboration is one of the, the buzzwords in, in modern IT applications or um, architectures, collaboration is only just picking up to, to really become important during modeling. The traditional way that people would sit together in a room, have their workshop, model and discuss a process, and, and then later on the consultant or internal group would come back with suggestions for improvements or implementations. Um, that is definitely changing. People tend to, to be more widespread across company sites and continents. And working on, on process models jointly is definitely something that, that is becoming more and more interesting in, in many companies. Import-export capabilities, however, play a role in, in mostly two scenarios from my perspective. On one hand, it's if you ever want to, to change the tool you're working with. So that would be migrating between tools. That is an aspect that we didn't look at too much. But there is also the aspect of how easily can I exchange information with other tools, for example, um, SAP, or how well can I publish my, my models to, to a website, things like that. So standard formats that would also allow um, other tools to, to support you with your analysis. Could be, well, statistical tools or, or other things. And, well, you always want to be able to, to get reports out of your data in Excel or Word formats or whatever you like. So that's what we cover in, in import export. The process analytics is, is uh, a broad range of capabilities, all the range from, again, specific reporting aspects, but also how easy it is to integrate uh, KPI measurements and really take that into account, or when we are talking about the risk and compliance issues, how can you um, communicate to your stakeholders that uh, you have a full comprehension of your processes, the associated risks, and uh, that it's crystal clear how you want to address them. One thing that maybe I'm, um, I'm, I'm a bit biased towards from, from my personal professional background um, is the, uh, the extent a solution is repository driven. How strong is the database uh, support for your models. Can you really distinguish between similar and, and same objects? Uh, can you centrally maintain the, uh, the, the metadata of a specific object, descriptions, links, uh, KPIs, whatever you have? I think that as, not, not only as soon as you come to more sustained exercises, but Whenever your, your BPM project is a bit uh, larger, this is really the key. And about document management, process release management, I've already talked when we come, uh, when I introduce the use cases. Okay, so let's actually dive into them.
here in the in the business process analysis arena, we see a, as I said, a very mature market where all the tools are fairly close together. One of the main differentiators, however, that we see is the level of repository enforcement and also the the extent of well how how versatile the 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 tool in the end really is what are the different scenarios it can support how easy is it to to create your reports and and also how customizable is your interaction with the tool and there we see areas as pretty much as a leader, I must say. But there are much lighter weight tools like Signavio in, in Hot Pursuit uh, that are really easy to use. Also in, in the most original sense of, of ease of use, not the extended sense as we applied in, in our study here. And tools that are, and, and Signavio also um, was quite an eye-opener when we came across it first time on its collaboration capability. I, I want to stress here, it's, it's not a singleton. It's not a, uh, as if Signavio or the latest release of ARIS are the only ones that, that are strong on the communication and collaboration side, for example. But those two, we found give you a very balanced offering in this sense. It's very, very difficult to differentiate between other tools on, on a very general level. So I, you, you could probably just as well lump the, the other tools here even closer together. Uh, but please refer to the details in the white paper for more information. I, I think one tool that I want to, to single out as on, on the lightweight side or on the, on the less integrated side is uh, the BPMN Visio modeler or Visio in this sense wouldn't make much of a difference. But here you have in the standard setup very little uh, repository support. And as I said, I think when you're talking about serious business process management, you simply can't do with a mature uh, database related backend. On the SAP integration side, we, we see three major sectors really. We see again BPM Visio Modeler on, on the most lightweight side, but with the strong drawback of, of hardly any, any capabilities of exchanging data or ex integrating directly uh, with the SAP products. Most importantly in, in this aspect, usually the, the solution manager. Then you have a broad stack of, of different solutions. Basically this, this entire middle block uh, that uh, at least has some capabilities to, to export the process structure, the process hierarchy with solution manager on top of all the other smartness factors that, that we considered. And ARIS, which currently is the only tool that does the full round trip between, so, so that would be back and forth synchronization uh, between Solution Manager and the BPM tool. Recently, you, you will have come across SAP spreading the word that they want to, to expand their own uh, offerings in uh, BPM modeling. But confessantly, um, we haven't seen an awful lot about that yet in practice. But it's, it's definitely something that also we as business process experts will keep a close eye on and see, for example, how the, the interaction or the integration with, with ARIS will develop on the long term now that uh, with Software AG, SAP also sees a strong competitor on the automation side. But for the time being, ARIS 
clearly is the, the strongest solution that we see in this arena. When it comes to uh, the risk and compliance management or general quality management, so when you want to go into your, your ISO certification or also uh, you, you may be interested in, uh, in, in the pharmaceutical quality system documentation according to, to ICH uh, consensus between the regulators, there all of a sudden uh, a shortcoming of many of the tools uh, becomes much more important. And that is on, on the release management of processes. The versioning not only of entire databases, but the versioning on the level of individual, individual processes, maybe even uh, lightweight uh, release processes like workflows for review and release and publishing, and also out-of-the-box creation of uh, regulatory relevant documents. And that is something where we were yeah, quite impressed with the capabilities uh, of DHC Vision, which we found uh, quite impressive here. Even though it's, it's not as uh, mature and advanced in, in situations like the, the SAP deployments or uh, general uh, business process management as, as we see uh, Signavio, Aris and, and also Innovator really, which also is a strong tool. But when it comes to going lightweight or fairly lightweight into governance, risk and compliance, that's where we see a strong point for, for this also fairly small company, the HC Vision. Well, this is pretty much the, the wrap up that I wanted to give you about our white paper study. In the end, it's not a scientific work. It's our experience and our opinion about these tools. And um, especially in, in downstream interactions from here, I'd be more than happy to uh, exchange opinions with you on these particular matters. But the, the most important take home message I, I have for you here is that it really depends on understanding first, what is it you want to achieve what is it uh, that you want to accomplish and on what time frame? And based on that, you can really start your evaluation and do your different weighting, maybe also on the evaluations that we provide in this white paper. So for more questions, please feel free to contact me directly, uh, jochen.koenig at bpexperts. De, or access our websites um, at www.bpexperts.de and maybe interesting for you also, we've started to provide courses in business process management at the BPE University website, so please feel free to take a look at that one also. So thank you very much, Jochen, for the presentation and the insights into BPE's tool study. Um, as mentioned, please visit us on our website for more information on us as well as on our upcoming webinars and events. Um, a recording of this webinar will be available on our website uh, for you and as well to share with your colleagues. So um, we're going to end for today. Thank you very much for joining us in this webinar. And I wish you all a pleasant week. Thank you and goodbye.